Hey everyone, as you might know, I'm Josh, senior software engineer in data and Gen AI at DoorDash and previously at Google, but that's not where I began. I started with the usual suspects on my resume like OS, Python, DBMS, SQL, and some buzzwords about cloud computing. My first role was at ZS and I was in the big data team and from day one I was staring at like 600 line long SQL scripts, huge airflow DAGs and redshift clusters and I was just wondering that how on earth do people even build this stuff. My first job showed me how hot this field was. I mean if you do a quick search about data engineering jobs on LinkedIn you'll find over 60,000 jobs in the US and over 30,000 in India and over 180,000 jobs worldwide. And those jobs pay well too. I mean the median salary in the US is about 120k and in, in India it's about I think 14 lakhs a year. And uh, as you go in a more senior role in big tech companies, it can go more than 450K in US and more than one crore in India. I learned everything on the job, piecemeal, like sprint by sprint. And I can tell you that that's a slow lane. If I were to rewind and relearn data engineering, this is how I would do it. And it's the fastest, cleanest, and the lowest friction way possible. Grab your notepad because we're not only going to talk about roadmap, but also about timelines and projects if you were to start your data engineering journey today. First of all, we need to understand the role. A lot of people confuse data engineer with data scientist, a machine learning engineer, or even data analyst. So think of it this way. Data engineers are responsible for designing, maintaining, and creating the plumbing. Data analysts would drink water out of those pipelines. Data scientists would run different kind of experiments to see which type of water tastes best and machine learning engineers bottle and label it. The key responsibilities include building data pipelines, designing data models, uh, orchestrating everything using a workflow, uh, improving the performance and optimizing the cost of your cloud infrastructure as well as enabling final end users like data analysts or machine learning engineers with their analysis. So keep all of these bullet points in mind because everything we talk about will tie back to these points. In the first section, we are going to talk about nailing the fundamentals and step one is learning Python. Why? Because it owns data engineering. Whether you think about like Airflow codes or uh, Pandas library or PySpark or even cloud SDKs like AWS SDKs, a lot of things are best exposed on Python. To learn Python in the most interesting way possible, I'm going to recommend this resource, which is Automate the Boring Stuff. So it starts with practical programming for total beginners. It starts with Python basics. It talks even things like working with Google spreadsheets or web scraping, debugging, and it goes all the way to manipulating images as well. It's a free to read book, so I would highly recommend this. All right, so once you know Python, the next step should be go to lead code and practice. Your aim should be to solve 60 to 80, starting with easy and then a little bit of medium problems as well. And you should be able to do this within 30 days. And then once you're done with lead code, also learn a little bit about PyTest, which is the unit testing library of Python. Step two is SQL and data warehousing. SQL is like your data engineering superpower. Whether you talk about DBT models or data warehousing or interview screens, none of these things are complete without SQL knowledge. But it's not just about memorizing select syntaxes. You need to think like a data engineer and you also have to study things like star versus snowflake schema, ETL or ELT or constraints. So here's the path I wish I had when I started. It's the associate data engineering track for SQL on data camp. I rewatched a few sessions while I was prepping for this video and then I was like reminded again that why I recommend this to a lot of people even on my one-on-one -on -one consulting. So it starts truly from zero, no prerequisites and it gets you uh, to window functions and snowflake in about 30 hours. Every concept shows up in hands-on labs. Whether you're talking about PostgreSQL install or creating tables or enforcing data types or even a mini project that analyzes student mental health data. At the end, you'll have neat little badge that you can toss on your LinkedIn, but more importantly, real muscle memory from writing and debugging queries in the browser. Once CTEs and SQLs and data warehousing concepts start feeling natural, you need to lock it down with a credential and something that has actual value in the market as well. So it's not just about do these courses and get this PDF kind of certification, but contains like a remote proctored exam that you have to give. So it's a data engineer associate certification and you'll find it here on data camp. So part one is like a 45 minute multiple choice question on the fundamentals. SQL performance, dimensional modeling, pipeline orchestration, and a bit of Python as well. And part two is the fun bit. So it's the hands-on case study where you spin up a notebook inside DataCamp's workspace, clean some raw files, load them into Postgres, model a schema and things like that, right? So you will literally be submitting code, no guesses. So the badge actually means something. It's kind of like an open book. So you can keep your uh, 
resources docs or cheat sheet with you which is very realistic to job and the results breakdown is immediate so you'll know what are your strengths and what are some things that you need to focus on so knock it out while the sql track and python everything that you learned is still fresh and i think four to six weeks for this is like a realistic timeline that you can focus on there are professional level certifications that you can check out again links are in the description step four is learning cloud so if you have not picked up a cloud and you're confused which one to pick and if you're a beginner then i would say just pick aws because it has the largest market share but if you already are learning a cloud in your job, then I would say just stick with that. It doesn't matter. So there are some important services from data engineers perspective that you need to focus on things like AWS S3, EC2, EMR or Redshift, IAM roles and also VPC basics, right? So these are like 101 things that you have to learn. So I'm going to link a couple of resources for this. Number one is this course on Udemy, which is the AWS Solutions Architect Associate, which is like kind of a lengthy course and it talks about all services, not just specific to data engineering. Then I would recommend DataCamp's AWS Practitioner course, which starts with understanding cloud computing and AWS concepts the cloud technology and all of these things. So it will give you a good overview. Learning from documentation and even things like chat GPT is a good idea. So do what rocks your boat. Cool, so programming, SQL, data modeling, cloud, all of these things done. So you are done through the fundamentals. Now let's climb to modern data stack. This contains things like Airflow, DBT, Spark, the works, the fun stuff. I'm going to talk about the tools or technologies that you should learn. The exact resources that you have to follow to learn all of those things is already mentioned in my roadmap video PDF. So I'm going to link it in the description for your reference. Number one is ingestion processing. So there are usually two types of pipelines, batch, streaming, or something that is a mix of both. So if you learn batch and streaming separately, you can tackle almost all data engineering problems well. For batch processing, I would recommend PySpark on something like Databricks or EMR. So you need to learn about data frames, partitioning, optimization, configuration, all of its underlying architecture. And for streaming, the most important things are like choose any one between Kafka or Kinesis and then also learn Apache Flink because Apache Flink or a little bit of Spark is sometimes used in near real-time analysis in conjuncture with Kafka and Kinesis. So here in Kafka, you learn things about partitions, consumer groups, topics, topic granularity, exactly funds delivery, things like that. After you have learned batch and streaming, next step I would recommend is do an exercise, do a batch and a streaming project on your own on AWS cloud. To find some interesting data sets, check out this website, which is data.gov. You can put your data from here to S3. You'll get data from all different kinds of domains here. You can clean it with PySpark. If you're interested about some streaming data sets, then check out this GitHub link. So mainly it's divided into two things, one which is free and second which are paid data sources. So I would just recommend stick to free ones and because it has a lot of domains like finance, transportation, information, IoT, etc. Okay, so once you know batch and real-time processing, next you need to focus on orchestration and transformation. So for orchestration, the best thing to learn is Airflow. So learn about DAGs, what are sensors or what are automated dependencies that you can set up in Airflow, how you can debug, retries, things like that. And when you learn DBT, DBT is like a Swiss Army knife in terms of SQL transformations. So it contains version control models, it has automated tests, everything. So you can wrap those Spark and SQL transformations within DBT with doing minimal coding and then you can execute it using Airflow. Next is warehousing and serving. So learn one thing, either learn Snowflake or BigQuery or Redshift. The best thing to learn in my opinion is Snowflake because it works with all three different cloud platforms and it is the one of the most common tools in most job descriptions. Uh, but even if you learn Redshift or BigQuery, it's fine. A lot of concepts kind of overlap. So understand the architecture behind it, micro partitioning, what are some features. So get a free tier account, do some hands-on and whatever processing that you did, right? So initially we learned about batch and streaming process, orchestrated or transformed those pipelines using Airflow or DBT. Now, at the end of that pipeline, you need to load that data somewhere. So that should be something like Snowflake. Another alternative to things like Snowflake, BigQuery, and Redshift is just simple S3 or Data Lake. So there's something called a uh, lake house architecture where you store data in uh, files, but they, are, they still support all asset transformations which you usually do on tables. For that, you need to learn about Delta Lake or Iceberg formats, which is also good to learn. So I would recommend that as well. And then there are some topics or tools in observability and quality that you can check out. For data observability or logs, one of the most common tools to learn is AWS CloudWatch. You can also learn about great expectations for setting up uh, data quality pipelines. Okay, so once you've learned everything, Next, what you need to do is build two capstone projects. So these are the projects that will showcase everything that you have learned up till this point. 
And the reason I'm recommending two is that one of the project you can focus specifically on batch and in second one, you can focus on streaming. Now, last section is portfolio and resume. So you already have your projects ready. All you have to do is pack them up very nicely. So all of your code, put it on a GitHub uh, repository and create a very good readme with all, all of the things like it, the architecture, what your project does, where to see the output, things like that. And create a demo video as well. Put it on your GitHub readme profile. Create kind of a blog post on Medium about your project, about what exactly you did. And then you can easily add all of those things in your projects within your resume section. Also remember those data camp links that I shared earlier, the credentials. So if you go with those, you can also add that in your resume in relevant certification section. That's my 2025 blueprint for data engineers. Nail the fundamentals, grab a valuable certification, climb the modern data stack, do a couple of projects that you can add in your portfolio and build your resume really well. And ultimately, it's just about sharing your story with confidence. And as I said, all the links that I'm mentioning in this video are in the description. So don't forget to check it out and smash the like if you found this video useful. Subscribe to the channel. This is Josh. Keep building pipelines. See you next time.